Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. First order of business is getting mana generation up and going in our new Batania base underwater. Very important, because I really don't want the water to come back, <laughs> and then my base will disappear. But just one little thing before that, just off camera, I did a couple things. I used the conversion wand from Astral Sorcery to convert all the stuff down here in the the uh, canola seeds, that's what they're called. I was thinking soybean seeds? No, that's not right. Yeah, converted everything to this chiseled cobblestone. Certainly not amazing looking, but a lot better than it looked before. And yes, I missed a couple spots. But it's fine, you can barely tell. And replaced all the torches with a bunch of these uh, illumination wand points. So that's looking a lot better. I also ran a huge XNet cable from almost the almost from end to end in the service tunnel that goes from our base to the Batania base. It's not connected at either end, but it pretty much goes the whole span, because I figure we're definitely gonna need to transmit items and stuff between the Batania base and here. At some point we're gonna need to do that. So might as well just get the infrastructure in place. Alright, let me think of how I'm gonna generate mana down there. So I didn't actually intend to do this, but I realized that I'm going to want power over at the Batania base because I'm going to want to run at least the crafter to craft the food into what I want it to be because I want the manage information all self-contained over there. And I'm sure I'm going to probably want power for other things too. And I was thinking, okay, I actually crafted all the stuff to make just a ton of wire relays and just run power over there, but I realized, why don't I use XNet because I already have the XNet wire laid down. XNet can transfer power. Fluids, power, and items. So, let's try it. So I'm just running power over here to this battery. Then I have an XNet connector right here. And one thing I'm curious about, that we're about to find out, is I'm going to put a connector. I'm going to connect a connector to the system that doesn't have any power. Can I get a connector? Or, sorry, not a connector, a controller? Yeah, can I get a controller to like funnel power to itself when it doesn't have any power you know just just take a little for itself so it can start doing some stuff oh I didn't realize these parts let's fix that oh yeah there's also this very very odd uh, I guess it's a bug can't imagine this is intended if you're holding an XNet cable for some reason all the lights from Wait, this is Forge Multipart? Huh, okay. When you place them, they become Forge Multipart instead of the Project Red Illumination. Well, regardless. Yeah, they all light up, which looks a little bit odd if you're kind of here. But then it gets really odd when you realize it shows you them through walls. I don't know what's up with that. But, anyway, let's... Ah, right, we need a connection so it has no power can I get it to give power to itself when it has no power so let's do energy extract so it's a max energy extraction per tick um, I'll just leave it at the default it's fine Insert. Okay, so it doesn't. You gotta give it something to start with. Alright, so I made a huge field down here. Converted all this into dirt and put a ton of worms on it. All for planting crops that we can use to generate mana, but I realized something after I'd finished the field, and that's how in the heck do I harvest it? Picking it up is not a problem. I can use ranged collectors and whatnot, but... The way I was using it over there at the bone meal factory was a mechanical user for every individual plant. I... I mean, I could put a mechanical user for every one of these spots, I guess, but it's not really practical. It'd be such a pain. So I've been looking for ways to, like, harvest a whole field that isn't one of the forestry farms. Like, I don't want to make a forestry farm down here. I just want it to be like this, and I just want to be able to harvest them. So I'm 
just hoping that this works. There's something called the Drum of the Wild. I've never used it before, but apparently it can be used to break crops. And that's the bad part. If it actually literally breaks them, then that's not very helpful. So I'm hoping maybe it's changed. The person said they like I found a thread of this was from maybe a year or two ago talking about how they wish it harvested crops instead of just straight up breaking them and that they had like posted to the GitHub for Botania saying like, hey, can you add that as a feature? And that was two years ago. So maybe it's been added. Maybe it'll harvest instead of breaking them. Let's find out. I don't know what the range on this thing is. It's activated by receiving a mana pulse. Because the Drum of the Wild can't store mana, a normal mana spreader will not transmit mana to it. I guess it only transmits mana to things that can store it. And since it doesn't store it, it won't. But you can apparently make something called a Pulse Mana Spreader just by combining a normal mana spreader with redstone. And then it should do the job. It fires a mana burst when given a redstone, redstone pulse, regardless of having a block in the end to put the mana or not. So it does need a redstone pulse. Okay. Well, that is fine. Okay, I got some sand. So every four seconds, that should send a pulse. How loud is this thing going to be? Oh, Christ. That was actually really loud. <laughs> oh, don't do it again. I'm going to go change the sound settings. I'm not sure where the sound is. I, th oh, I think it might just be a uh, default Minecraft sound, so I'm just going to put the muffler next to it. Okay, now for the actual test to see whether this matters at all. <laughs> Let's see what this does to this plant. Is it going to break it even though it's not grown? <sighs> I'm not sure what to do about this field. Okay, I'm thinking there might be a way to actually make this work, possibly. There may be a hard way to make it work, which is this method, and then there's definitely an easy way to make it work, which is just to install the Industrial Foregoing mod, which is a replacement in this version of Minecraft for Mine Factory Reloaded, which would give me machines that would allow me to mass harvest fields and things like that. That's the easy way, but okay, maybe I can make something cool that will do it using the technology we have, but it's all dependent on how this Ronin Carpus flower behaves. This is supposed to place blocks nearby it. Um, I believe how it's supposed to work. These axe on dirt, that's fine. I'm going to get rid of this because it sounds weird when everything has almost no sound. I believe how it works is the block that it is placed on, in this case it's placed on a dirt block. Oh, that actually might be a problem. Um, well, it's placed on dirt blocks. So I believe how it behaves is if any item is dropped within two blocks of it, so like immediately around it, any item that gets dropped, it will then try to place in the world on uh, based on whatever it is planted on. So I think it'll try to plant it on any blocks around it that are dirt because it's planted on dirt, I think. I don't know if it'll work on this because this is this is dirt, but it's tilled. I don't know if it cares. I mean, I guess, could I till this? I don't know. Um, let's try it. So let's just see if this will plant. Also, does it have mana? It's kind of important. Uh, yeah, it's close enough to get mana from it. Okay. You can see it says dirt down there, so I think that means I'm going to plant on dirt. Hmm. Hmm. Well, that went well. <laughs> I tried placing it on till dirt, but that didn't make any difference. I think maybe uh, because lettuce is not actually a block, it says it places blocks in the world, not items. So it may not work. Let's see. Does this work? It put it somewhere. I'm not sure where. Maybe somewhere off in the water. Ah, uh, but yeah, it has to be a block, so it's not going to work with food, so I don't think there is a practical way to do this. I think I pretty much have to install industrial foregoing if I want this to work in any kind of a practical way. 
Well, trying to install a, a different version of My Factory Reloaded and other stuff did not work, so I'm just back to how we were before. And I think I overlooked some farming options, actually. I think we actually do have a couple things that can do the job for us. I think either the farming station or the farmer could do it. Farming station's a little bit fancier, I think. It's also a bit more expensive. But it's all stuff that's totally doable. But I think I want to try the farmer from Actually Additions, because I believe the farming station actually requires a hoe inside of it, a tool, and I think it uses up the durability of it. And I'd rather not deal with that, so I'm just going to try the Actually Additions farmer. Now, taking a look at it, we're going to need camouflaged paneling from forestry, which I've never made before. That is made with a bunch of different colors inside of the carpenter. Okay, so we should be able to do that. What about ash? How do we... How do we get ash? You have to smelt peat? How do you get peat? Um... You get it from a mud brick? How do you get a mud brick? Liquid dirt. <laughs> All right, then. I guess I'm going to have to put a bunch of dirt inside of our um, furnace over there. Burn some dirt. Okay, anyway. That's doable. However, we also need biomass. Yeah, we need all this stuff plus biomass. This is required, right? This isn't like... It's not going to make biomass from this, is it? No, no way. And to make biomass, we need a fermenter, which we don't have, so I'm going to make some stuff and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I'm pretty much all set to make the paneling. So I set up the fermenter here, and I've just got a chest feeding in stuff to ferment. You can, it seems like you can ferment pretty much any sort of vegetable or fruit or basically anything that you can grow. So I've got that feeding broccoli at the moment into this thing. It also takes water. Some things take water, some other things take, like honey or fruit juice, depending on what you're fermenting, but broccoli takes water and vegetables seem to take water. It also takes fertilizer, and with that it makes the biomass that I need, which I've got going out to this reinforced large drum here. I did actually know, like, in the past I've known that the extra utility drums have been just ridiculously large. I think I mentioned before how I think they're just silly how much they can hold given how small they are. You know, it feels a lot more immersive to have something like this, where it's a big tank that actually holds, you know, a big amount of fluids. But I never knew how big this exactly was until it's actually started filling up with something. So, that's millibuckets. So if you remove the three zeros, you get the number of buckets. This thing holds 4,096 buckets. 4,096 buckets in one block compared to a big tank like this that holds 512 buckets. It's just like ridiculously overpowered. It's absurd. But because I'm making something so temporary, you know, I don't exactly intend to use biomass all the time. That's why I just plop this down. Because I just happen to have them. But yeah, they're so freaking big. Anyway. Take this with me. Oh. Right, I also made all the... I set up a super, super simple little system, if you even want to call it that. I finally just put a chest here that just puts stuff inside of the the smeltery. So I just processed a ton of dirt, made a bunch of mud bricks, turned that over into peat, put it through the furnaces, which, by the way, a little while ago, I think off-camera, I turned this into three furnaces instead of just one, so it's a bit faster. And made a bunch of ash. And with that, I think we have everything we need. I got all the colors that we need. We need yellow, blue, and also red, which I'm using floral red powder from Batania for that. Then we need the ash and then wood pulp. I just happen to have some in the system because I made it a long time ago. Now, <laughs> I, gotta, <laughs> I gotta reach this machine back here. It is the carpenter, right? Yeah, the carpenter. Ooh, how am I gonna get the biomass in it? Um, yeah, I can get the biomass in it just fine. No problem. Let's put a fluid conduit right here. Tell this to extract. There we go. Get rid of this recipe. 
So I believe we have ash on top, pulp on the bottom. Red, blue, yellow. Red, blue, yellow. And then we have wood in the center, which I forgot. All right, we got a bunch of camouflage paneling here. Now, before I go mass producing a bunch of these farmers, I've never used them before. Let's just make sure they're going to do what I want them to do. I'm pretty confident they will, but let's just test it. Also, I'm curious, what else is this used for? Camouflage spray can. What the heck does that do? There's so many items in forestry I've just never used. Well, it's not using crafting. You can obviously spray something to turn it in camouflage, I guess. I don't know. Greenhouse block? Hmm. Greenhouse glass? Wait, there's a forestry variant of greenhouse glass? Because I know there's also... I think it actually additions greenhouse glass? Yeah. And that's required empowered palace crystal block, which actually, speaking of, we could totally make this now. Yeah, we could, we could totally make this. No problem. Oh, wait. Requires prismarine. Well, we can get that. It, mm, it'd be hard to mass produce, though. I need a lot of it. Because this would make one block. Alright, so according to the Actually Editions manual, it says... It will form in a 9x9 area in front of it. So we're obviously going to need more than one. In fact, that's not going to reach all the way to the center, is it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, not quite, but that's fine. I'm okay with the very, very center not being farmed. Yeah, that's not a big deal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Does it go nine each side? It says nine by nine. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, just got a quick connection here for power. Let's export power to it. Insert. Should have power now. Yep. 100,000 RF. Dang. So let's see how this works. I'm assuming it will plant that. Yes. Well, let's just fill it up, I guess. Plants reasonably fast. Why did that just pop out? The heck? Why is my lettuce popping out sometimes? It didn't just like grow, did it? That fast? I doubt it. No? Why did that happen? Are those places cursed? What the? Is it too dark? I just turned on the light display, I think. Doesn't seem like it. I have no idea what's wrong with these dirt patches. Anyway. Yeah, it definitely doesn't cover the edges. I'm going to need more than four. But I'm okay with it not touching the center. That's fine. Anyway, let's bone mill these things up and see how it harvests them. Does it harvest them nicely or does it destroy them and have to replant them? Either way, it's okay because we can just, you know, feed the product back into here for it to replant it. But I'm curious. Okay, it destroys it. Oh. It puts it back in to plant it? Am I seeing that correctly? Alright, I should break all those. Whoops, I just clicked that. Yep, it's going to work. Puts in here, so it should start to plant them. Mm. Why didn't it plant them? Until I moved them. I don't get it. This thing's funky. Let's try that again. I mean, it's losing some of them, so it seems to be planting them. 18. Now it's doing nothing. 
Is it just really slow? No, I think it just replanted one. Okay, it's just a little bit slow, it seems like. But it is replanting them. I'm not sure why there's two different panels here. I don't know if there's any difference. I don't really get that. Because this is where harvested stuff goes inside of, and also where it plants from. Hmm. And yep, those two cursed spots are still cursed. Well, this is definitely going to work. The only question is, am I okay with the speed? Because I need this to be very fast. I'm not sure I'm totally happy with the speed. Alright, I've coupled together the Ender IO farming station. I want to give this thing a try. I know it's quite different from this thing. I think it's a lot more complicated. Again, it uses the hoe. This hasn't done much. It seems to leave a lot of them just hanging out. Although that might have been my fault. Hmm. Anyway, yeah, so it uses the hoe. It's a lot more complicated. Uses the durability of the hoe. Um, also, it's kind of like a center type thing where this thing goes in the middle of your farm. It doesn't farm in front of it. It farms on all sides. So this would ideally be directly in the center. Obviously, this is in the center, but it'd be a little bit off center. Just for the sake of testing it, though, let's put this in place of it. No seeds. Okay. Yeah, that's complicated. <laughs> um, well, I guess the axe would be for trees. This is probably for taking leaves, if you want. We should just need the hoe. Oh, you can put bone meal in here to bone meal it all if you want to. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this thing's really cool. If you put capacitors in it, I believe it'll upgrade the range that it works at, and of course also the speed as well. And it's sort of similar to forestry in the sense that you have four different sides that you can configure to be different things. So, what direction is this? This is south. Oh, right, it's not just like south, north, it's southwest. So, so southwest is going to be, I think, like everything in this line, and then this way. So it's going to farm like that stuff for southwest. So we can lock down what's there. So does that mean I can like put lettuce there, and then log it down? Looks right. So does that mean if I destroy one of these, it's going to replant it? Yes. A little bit of a delay, but that's fine. How fast does it replant? Is it out? Oh, it's out. Oh. I guess we'd want to lock these as well, so then it can only go into that one slot. Yes. Hmm, it can only hold 16 at one time. Strange, so it can hold a smaller stack size than the thing naturally stacks to. Yeah, replants pretty fast, even without any capacitor upgrades. Okay, now what about harvesting? Let's... Well, I guess I'll just put bone meal in here. See, is it going to use it? Yep, just started using it. Uh, definitely doesn't use the bone meal too fast. But now that's fully grown, it should harvest it. It just did. Now, where does it go? So it looks like it tries to refill its internal seed buffer first, which is probably why it only holds 16. And then I'm assuming once it gets over that amount, it's going to start to put it here. Let me just fill it up to make sure. Yeah. This is way better. This thing's way better. It's faster. It's more customizable. You can put bone meal in it. Not that I intend to do that, but I really like how this works. Yeah, this thing's awesome. Okay. This is the way to go. And of course, I'm going to put a capacitor upgrade in it. Make it larger. I still think I'm probably going to need more than one, though. Let me upgrade this thing with one of my, like, super dungeon capacitors and place this kind of in the center and just see what the range is. 
Okay, I've got an ugly cable going over to it. It's roughly centered. You can see right now it looks like the range is three out. Yeah, it goes three out, which is pretty sad. Uh, so let's unlock these. <clears throat> let's say... It's going to plant everywhere. Alright, so now you can absolutely see the range. Ooh. Oh, you know what? I wonder if it... It may not actually use up the durability of the hoe unless it needs to till the ground. I wonder if the worms make it so it doesn't use that. I'm not sure. The durability has been used a little bit of it, though. And I don't think I've broken, broken that much of the farmland. Anyway, let's put the caster in it. So it looks like it made it four wider. It's pretty good. Oh yeah, let's put some bone meal in it too, so it goes faster. Oh, it looks like if you upgrade it, it also holds more seeds per slot. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty good, but that is a significant amount of unused farmland. Oh wait, is it going further? I think I might be going further out. Let's wait a second. Well, it didn't quite fish, finish planting them all, and it went through all the bone meal, but yeah, that range is pretty good. It doesn't cover all the farmland, but you know what? I think it might be enough. And I like the simplicity of having one farming station right in the center. The alternative, I guess, would be... I mean, if you, if you really wanted to cover everything, you'd have to have four farming stations. I think this is going to be enough. I'm going to leave it like this. Oh, Christ. I've been recording for two and a half hours just to get this far because of all that noodling around with trying to install mods and crashing and messing up and stuff. And I've made very little progress. I don't even have my mana generation up and going. Well, I'm going to try to push forward at least to getting that up and running. Okay, got it half and half on onions and lettuce to make the same type of food I was making before. And yes, it turns out that these couple of cursed dirt blocks, I think it was because of a lack of light, so I just put a bunch of lights over the whole thing. So it shouldn't be a problem anymore. Put some more bone meal in this thing. We've developed a good store of lettuce. Not so much on onions, but that's all right. Once we get the agricarnations going, we should be fine. Okay. Oh, yeah. And of course, I also ran the uh, network cable underground here. So it comes up underneath the farming station. Much cleaner looking. So now that that's working, now we want to export all of that to, I guess... To drawers, probably, huh? Yeah. We'll export from there to some drawers, and then we'll export from the drawers to our crafter. It's similar to how we had it set up over there. Alright, I've got two drawers here. They have void upgrades and some capacity upgrades. Each one can hold 208 stacks, which should be a huge buffer. Got them locked down with the appropriate things. Got them connected up to the system down here. So let's start to export. So I'll make an item channel here. Gonna export from the farming station. And just export a whole stack. And I shouldn't need to make a filter because each one can only accept the one particular item. So I think that's it. It's full of lettuce. Oh yeah, we have no extra onions yet, so nothing to transfer. And yep, the farming station is designed really well, so if you try to extract from it, it only allows you to extract from here, not from the internal seed buffer, which is good. It's what you want. Oop. Yeah, it looks like you can't actually manually place items in here. Only if it harvests it can it place it in there. It's interesting. Uh, oh. It lets you take it all out even if it's locked. Alright. Put that back. That's scary. Don't touch those. So we have a lot of lettuce and, like, no onions. 
So I want my mana generation to be in the center here because I figure, you know, all the mana storage is pretty much going to be here in the center where it's being generated. That's where the bulk of it will be. And then we're going to spread out into the side chambers because that's where the things like the terrestrial, uh, like the terra steel plate thing and portal to Alfheim and all the runic altars and stuff like that are going to be probably in the side chambers. And I think it'd be easy to have all the mana in the center so then it can just go out in all these directions to distribute it. So I think I want room to expand my mana generation in case I want more mana. So I think I'll just put the old four that I had before, the four eating flowers, just right here. They should all fit pretty well, and then that gives me room to add a bunch more around the rest of this place if I want to. So I ended up making five of the Gormialises, just for symmetry. One in the center and two on each side. And I also made them floating, just so that I can... Don't have to, you know, replace this block down here with pure dirt to plant them in, and it also just looks cooler. And and if the water happens to cave in here, the flowers won't be washed away at least. I mean, I'm thinking theoretically, with everything I'm building, I'm pretty sure if the water did come in, I think I'd be okay. I think the farmlands would be washed away, but they could be replanted pretty easily. I don't know about the worms, though. It's, you know, it's possible the worms would drown and disappear if they're underwater. I don't know. And I guess mm, these lights, if they were covered in water, they may disappear. But I don't think it would actually be disastrous. Not a complete disaster, anyway. Anyway, so you might wonder, what the heck am I doing here? What are these beautiful, beautiful stocks of connectors? Well, to make it all blend in a little bit better, I am using these facades from Xnet. I don't think I showed using them on camera, but I actually used them a little bit down in the canola seed place when I changed out the walls. So I've just made it look like this, uh, what's it called, living rock brick. So we can just do this. Pretty cool, huh? Um, I could also replace this here, but I think I like it. Yeah, I like it better like that. It looks cooler. And I can't make the entire thing brick, by the way, because these connectors cannot be set to a facade. But yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. Alright, I think I've got everything set up and or in my inventory to get the whole mana generation set up going. Um, let's see, what have I done since I showed you? Uh, I hooked up each one of these to the system. So you can access all the droppers through here. I also placed a crafter down here. So that's going to be used to make our food. And let's get some of these things set up. So for now, until I figure out a better mana system, probably using sparks, I'm just going to put a mana pool... I guess two in front like that. Let's see how this looks. I made a bunch of elven mana spreaders, by the way. I think I'll leave it like that. All right, got the whole thing set up. All the elven mana spreaders pointing to all the mana pools, all the flowers connected. Everything looks nice and symmetrical. Let's get the system up and going. So I'm already supplying power to the crafter, but I'm not actually exporting the items. So on this channel, we're importing or we're inserting into the drawer, so we're going to have to create a new channel to export from them. I'm going to disable this for now. So we're going to export... How much does it store for each item? Uh, so I'll just leave it for a, a stack. Yeah, so I'll just say, just keep 64. Same with this. Export stack 64. And we're going to insert into the grafter. Shouldn't have to set this. Um, I guess I'll just turn that on and see if it's working. It's going down, so I think it's working. Let's go double check. Yep, looks beautiful. Aw, poor Squiddy. Can you collect them with a golden lasso? 
Oh my god! There you go, buddy. I saved you. <laughs> I just lassoed a squid. How does that work? <laughs> uh. Okay, now we need to extract from the crafter, so we're actually going to have to make another channel for that. Disable it for now. Uh, let's set this to round robin. I'm going to keep destination inventory. Let's keep a stack in each. Then we want to insert into each of these. And as soon as I enable this channel, we should have mana generation. Here we go. Oh, I'm seeing the mana bursts. I think it took a little while because I, the mana, elven mana spreaders hold more mana, so it probably took more mana for them to actually be able to send the first burst. But yeah, how are they doing on taking the mana from the Gormialis? Yeah, look at that, they're doing excellent. There's definitely no worries of the Gormialis producing mana too fast and wasting it as we had with the other mana spreaders, which I was pretty sure wasn't happening, but I wasn't quite sure. But now I'm definitely sure. We're definitely not wasting any mana at all. Look at how much mana we have already. It's only been like 20 seconds. Bedonia is a really pretty mod. I love these particle effects. Now they're no longer green. They're nice purple. Very cool. Okay, so now we have mana generation. Just in time. This pool is getting pretty low. If that goes all the way down, we're going to be underwater. Alright, well, on that note, now that I've got mana generation actually going, I think I'm going to end it here. I am curious. Am I using up... Yeah, I'm definitely using up way... That stuff way, way faster than I'm making it. Of course, I'm going to get aggrocarnations going, so that shouldn't be a problem. But yeah, I think I'm going to end it here. So I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to get some of our mana distribution going on. Distribute over to the farm to get aggrocarnations, so that that's self-sufficient on the mana generation front. Distribute to all the pools, so our bubbles don't come, well, bursting down. And get the rest of this Batonia base set up.